Come all you young sailormen, listen to me. I'll sing you a song of the fish in the sea. And it's windy weather, boys, stormy weather, boys. When the wind blows, we're all together, boys. Blowy winds west. Welcome to our poster presentation by Maritime's own Renee Rapp, David Wang, and Laura Andrews. We hope you enjoy it, and we welcome questions later in, this, in the presentation. Designing displays on no budget is not easy. However, this past year has taught me to be creative in using college archives collections and other free tools. The Stephen B. Lewis Library is located in Fort Schuyler. This library takes up four bays and two floors of the fort. Our students spread out charts and study on large solid wood tables, use the library as a passageway to class, and the services at the Academic Support Center. All classes were fully remote in summer 2020. By the fall, some classes were remote while others were in person. And by spring 2021, all classes were fully in person. The library remained open in the beginning of the fall. However, the Academic Success Center was closed for the year. The library opened fall 2020 at reduced capacity to Bay 1 and the first floor. In the photo of the library, Bay 1 ends at the first arch. This limited the library usage, causing students to only have access to the circulation desk and some computers. We took down all book displays and periodicals to keep in line with OCLC's reopening archives, libraries, and museums research. This left one display case as the only refuge from COVID fatigue. At first, display cases were updated every semester. However, when the library space was limited, we decided to update it monthly. As archivist, I spent most of my time looking through archival collections, and one of my favorites is the photographs collection. Like new students, this was also my first year at Maritime College. Unfortunately, none of us got to experience walking through or even using the entire library. The inspiration for this display was to showcase the interior of the library and its changes over the years. Using the College Archives collect Photographs Collection, I found photos of the space when the Mestex was renovated to the current library. As you can see, we've kept the tables. As much as I enjoy the photos in the No Food in the Library display, I was limited to using office supplies, which made the display flat. The goal of the display is to feature library and archives materials, share stories and histories to students and faculty, and for visitors to learn and enjoy. The October display did not hit all of those goals. I hate to admit this, but I am not a crafty person. I've tried so many hobbies, including knitting, sewing, gluing, you name it, but I've never kept it up. So at home, I have a box full of short-lived hobbies. And instead of letting the box gather dust, I donated it to the library. Now we have display and craft supplies. And this box includes cardstock, paper, adult coloring books, a sewing machine, knitting needles and yarn and weight, and much more. The, display case, the October display case only had black and white photos. This time I wanted to add dimension and excitement to the display. So I used my personal free Canva account. Canva is a graphic design platform with free templates, designs and images and a great feature of Canva is creating this duplicates of the page, and this streamlined the process of creating future displays. Now with the craft box, we had supplies to make exciting and colorful displays. In January, I had a reference request asking about the first black students at Maritime. This simple request jumpstarted my research through yearbooks looking for the first black cadets. Using my Canva account, I was able to brighten up black and white photos from the yearbooks by duplicating each page, it was, easy to ch it was easy to change photographs and profiles information for each cadet. With mass requirements and social distancing, pol social distancing policies, it made book displays difficult as we did not want to encourage multiple students from handling the same book without a quarantine period. For the Women's History Month book display, we used book cards to prop up books behind the table and I used Canva to create a sign and reading list asking students to request a book from the circulation desk. For the reading list, I reused a previous Women's History Month LibGuide and refreshed the materials from our circulating collection focusing on women writers, women in government, and women in maritime history. Students passing by the display were able to scan a QR code on the flyer to view the LibGuide, which also included, women, which also included women's history resources like online exhibits. My colleague Laura upcycled a plastic tablecloth from an office wedding engagement party and used a mannequin from the archives room to create a beautiful dress as a centerpiece of the display. I used Canva to create portraits of the women featured on, this, on the display to make a skirt of the dress. And this definitely caught the eye of many of our students. 
With a lost summer sea term in 2020 and no spring break in 2021, the semester was stressful to students and faculty. To give students a mental break from their studies and approaching midterms, we filled unused space in the library, and one of those spaces was the Academic Success Center. We wanted to make a live March Madness bracket that would be updated every day and displayed in the library for passing by students and faculty to see. The biggest issue we encountered was the space. March Madness brackets are very large, starting with 68 teams. At first, we thought of using a whiteboard, but we couldn't fit all 68 teams on the board. The Academic Success Center was the perfect place for a giant March Madness bracket. It took a lot of time printing and cutting each logo throughout the month, but students enjoyed something different. And we even used Stephen B. Luce as a character for students and faculty to play against his bracket. Just as students were wrapping up midterms in early March, finals were quickly approaching in mid-April. With There was tension on campus to wrap, to wrap up classes and prepare for long summer C term. And I wanted to create an easy and interactive display within campus COVID policies. At first I thought of I Spy, a display full of stuff, but another favorite game came to mind. Guess who? I, I knew a few faculty were also alumni, so I looked through their profiles on the college website to see who else went to Maritime. With my list of faculty members, I had student workers pull yearbooks and find and scan pages of faculty members. Again, I used Canva to create clues using yearbook photos and facts from their online profile. The display was colorful and interactive with an answer sheet on the side of the display case. Students and faculty enjoyed looking through the photos and guessing who was who in the, as a mystery cadet. And one faculty member was delighted to see himself featured in the display. A typical finals week at the library includes free drinks and snacks as students prepare for exams, capstone projects, and licensing tests. Unfortunately, our budget could not cover this. Instead, we had to think of relaxing activities that, again, were COVID compliant. Two of the most relaxing activities during finals week for me as a student was listening to music and coloring. So I created a free Spotify account for the library and assigned student workers to fill the four playlists I created. Not only did our students enjoy listening to the music, our student workers enjoyed working on it. Again, I used Canva to create postcard size flyers and a QR code generator. Each card was placed on every table and study carol so students could just use the touch-free QR code to access the playlist. In my old craft box, I also had a dozen coloring, adult coloring books. I copied pages featuring mandalas, animals, flowers, and other intricate designs. And Laura created the Stephen B. Loose coloring page. We spread out the coloring pages and crayons across the circulation desk for students to grab and go. Students did not expect coloring pages during finals week, so we made more copies for the training ship and can't wait to see the students' artwork. Hello everyone, this is David Wang. I am the student experience librarian and instruction coordinator, and I will be talking about repurposing the library lecture series. Um, so we, basically transition from in-person events to remote virtual library presentations. We planned our first virtual event in early August uh, 2020 and scheduled it for early October. We wanted to welcome students back virtually with an event that displayed both understanding and empathy. As our campus started taking the first steps to returning to a semblance of normalcy six months into the pandemic, we wanted to provide strategies for de-stressing and relaxation. We planned our first virtual event in early August 2020 and scheduled it for early October. We wanted to welcome students back virtually with an, an event that displayed both understanding and empathy. As our campus started taking the first steps to returning to a semblance of normalcy six months into the pandemic, we wanted to provide strategies for de-stressing and relaxation. Our first event was titled Meditation, Mindfulness, and Music. Two guests, both from our maritime community, explored mindfulness, meditation, and active listening techniques. The library lecture series has traditionally been a way for our faculty and students
students to connect with one another outside of the classroom. It served sometimes as a forum for intellectual enrichment, sometimes as a historical connection to a past maritime era, and sometimes as a ticket to meeting a wonderful local author. We invited two guests to share their passion, one in presidential history and one in cruising and the history of the cruise ship industry. Harold Holzer and Bill Miller are wonderful scholars who gave our students, faculty, and staff two impressive history lessons. Our attendance numbers reached a Zoom limit threshold of 300 attendees with Professor Holzer's event, so the transition from in-person to virtual event enabled us to host four to five times our normal audience capacity. While the fall 2020 semester served as a proving ground for remote lectures at Luce Library, our spring semester library lecture series demonstrated our growing comfort level of flexibility in organizing events virtually. We pushed the boundaries of complimentary pro bono bookings by inviting famous authors and guests, including honored scholar Gary Sick and former hostages John Limbert and Barry Rosen for a look back at the Iran hostage crisis. Our event was broadcast on C-SPAN's American History series. And finally, in mid-January, we organized a part civic engagement, part tribute event to MLK with local politicians and community groups. Hi, my name is Laura Andrews and I'm going to talk a little about how we upcycled the image of Stephen B. Luce, who is the namesake of our library here at SUNY Maritime College. Before I get into how we upcycled Stephen B. Luce's image to a Goodwill ambassador, I would like to um, talk a little about who he was and introduce you to him. So who is Stephen B. Luce? Stephen B. Luce was born on March 25th, 1827 in Albany, New York. He joined the Navy at the very young age of 14 and died in Newport, Rhode Island on July 28, 1917. Stephen served in both the Mexican-American War and the American Civil War. Stephen B. Lee's had a very long career with the Navy, and in his honor, the Navy named three ships after him. One was the USS Luce, destroyer number 99, which was in service from 1918 to 1936. The other was USS Luce, DD-522, which was in service during World War II from 1943 through 1945, and lastly, the USS Luce DLG-7, which had a long tenure and was in service from 1961 to 1995. After his successful career in the Navy, Stephen had a second career in education. Stephen developed the first formal training program for sailors. He advocated higher education for naval officers, and he also was the first president of the Naval War College at Newport, Rhode Island. So why is our library at SUNY Maritime named after him? Um, the reason is because Stephen was responsible for acquiring and outfitting the USS St. Mary's, and he also gave it to us, which became the first nautical school in the United States which is now known as our own SUNY Maritime College. If you walk through our library, you will see that there is a large portrait of him. As soon as you walk in through our front doors, you can't miss it. And he stands there looking very regal and imposing.
but we wanted to change his image to a Goodwill ambassador. And to do that, we had to bring him back to life. This past fall, students were returning to a very different campus and library. We needed to put strict safety measures in place due to COVID, but we also wanted to warmly welcome our students back. Instead of having austere signs to keep your mask on, I thought it would be fun if we could use Stephen as a model for how to wear your mask and thanking our students for wearing their mask in his library. The signs were a hit and because of this, I decided to use Stephen in a lot of different scenarios. Here he is wishing people a happy holiday season and announcing our holiday hours. Here he is letting our students know that the library is closed due to inclement weather and wishing our students a very happy Valentine's Day. How romantic. Also wishing our students a happy St. Patrick's Day. Here he is challenging our students to pick a better bracket than he did. And here he is promoting our book drive and research contest. Here he is cheerleading our students to do their best on their finals and wishing them luck to wishing them a happy May the 4th and congratulating our graduates. So as you can see, Stephen is a great Goodwill ambassador for the Stephen B. Lewis Library and he is definitely a star and rightfully so. He can be seen on our Instagram channel and on signs and posters throughout the library. Thank you so much for watching this presentation about how we upcycled Stephen B. Lewis. Bye-bye.